He's getting on for a couple of years now since I made this video lamenting the fact that modern day hi-fis just don't have enough flashing LEDs on them, but I found a way to get the 80s back with this LED music visualizer panel. Now I thought I might be the only person that felt this way, but looking at the views on that video, it seems quite a few other people are interested in bringing back flashing LEDs too. Now before I start this new video about another LED spectrum analyzer, I thought I'd look back at the comments on the previous video to see what things people were particularly interested in, and I've categorized those into seven different kinds of comments. The first category are people who have another solution to this, they like LEDs or flashing VU meters or visualizers, but they've got a different way of doing it, whether it's in software or whatever, and they just wanted to share that information. Well. Thanks. The next bunch were people who were just expecting too much, thought it was some sort of high spec piece of lab equipment, a proper spectrum analyzer. No, it's just flashing LEDs on a piece of plastic, just something for entertainment. It was suggested that I could have made one of these myself and perhaps with enough time and a bit of practice I could have done, but my videos tend to be about things that you can go ahead and buy yourself. Things for lazy people like me. As usual, there were a couple of confused people, one that thought I was selling these things, and of course the usual people that thought I was James May. Whether he sells them, I don't know, but I definitely don't. And then there were the complainers, the people that just like to type out miserable crap for no good reason at all. This guy thinks I should be hanged for demonstrating this device. But then on the flip side of that, we've got the people that the video was actually made for. People that have been looking for something like this for themselves for quite a long time, didn't know where to get hold of it until I showed it to them, and then they're able to go ahead and buy one. And then finally we've got people that liked it but thought maybe I over egged it in the video description by calling it giant and I'll admit to that it's a fair cop. So this next video goes out to the last two groups of people, people that like these flashy lights but want them a bit bigger. So what you're looking at here is a giant LED music visualizer that I purchased from China. It comes fully constructed, it's got 128 pixels wide and 32 pixels or LEDs high. Each of those are multicolored LEDs. You can change the color of the peaks by pressing the red button and cycle through the colors of the base by pressing the green button. I'll put the dimensions up on screen now and apparently the people that make these do make quite a few different variations of it, although this is the largest and the most expensive of those. I'll have some links up in the video description so you can get in touch with them if you want any of the other options. My favourite feature about this is that it gets the sound using a microphone, therefore you don't have to plug an audio device into it. You can if you want, but that means of course your audio device has to have two outputs. Whereas with a microphone you can just put it on top of something and it picks up the sound that's in the room. And it is very sensitive as well, and it reacts very quickly. In fact, I don't really notice any delay in it at all. Now this isn't a professionally made device by a big company, I get the feeling it's probably just one chap in his bedroom. For example, here's the instructions that come with it, although to be honest there's not much you need to know. Plug it in, and then you've just got the two buttons on the side to cycle through the colours. Now the overall construction of it um, leaves a little bit to be desired. It's got a metal frame on it and this uh, plexiglass front I think it is, uh, but the screws are rather obvious in the top of it. It's a bit uh, amateurish, I suppose, but you don't really tend to see the top of it. Uh, the problem really lies mostly around the back here, where we've got this plastic sheet which tends to fall out of position, and everything feels a little bit sort of sharp and nasty. And on that subject, I would never have found out about this particular device without the help of a nice chap called Terry, who sent me a link to his, and to get around the nasty frame, he's had his reframed, and it looks a lot better like that. 
Now I've taken the back off mine so we can have a better look at it, but let's look at the side first of all where we've got those two buttons for the top and bottom colours of the bars. The microphone hole is there, 3.5mm mini jack and the power lead. Now inside the back here, the circuit board on the left is the bit that does all the recognising the sound and stuff. Across in the middle, you can see that the panels are split down the middle. There's two panels in here that seem to join in the middle, identical panels, with a power supply stuck to the back of them there at a bit of a jaunty angle, and everything in here is a little bit botched together you can see how it's held in so you can see why it'd be a good idea to perhaps reframe this although it does work so I can't really criticize it it's just the handiwork is uh, well, it leaves a bit to be desired let's say that the circuit board on the left here has a visualizer on it as well you can see how quickly it reacts to any noise it hears very quick reaction on there and that's of course then converted to what the LEDs display on the front there's the chip on that board by the way in case people are interested in knowing what that was and this is about as close as I can get the plastic panel fitted onto the back. The most disappointing thing for me about this device is the way that it handles the settings. We've got two buttons on the top, a red and a green button. They both cycle through various colours. The red button is for the top, and as you see, as I'm pressing it now, we're cycling through the peak colours on the top of the bars there. And there's seven different options. So to get round to the seventh one, you press it obviously seven times. So let's just get to a green one here. So I'll just keep pressing until I find green. Right, we've got green now. Okay, so the bottom options, the bottom bar is the green button. Now, I'll press that green button and we'll see how it cycles through quite a few different colours. We've got uh, simple one colour displays here to start with. But once we've gone past those, we start getting into these multicoloured things uh, that are different hues and they start uh, at one colour at the bottom, work their way up through the bar into different colours. And you think, well, that's quite nice. The trouble is, there's 66 of them, or maybe 65, because it takes 66 times for the button to be pressed to get back to that original red colour that we started off with. That's maybe too many in my opinion, but okay, it'd be fine if you had to set it up the once. So if we just press it loads of times very quickly here, I'll just get it into something that looks quite ridiculous. So, okay, that'll do. We'll pick that one there. So we're fine with that now. We think, yeah, this is the one we want. But the trouble is we switch it off and then the next time you switch on the VU meter, it reverts back to the original red at the bottom and blue at the top. It doesn't retain the setting that you put into it. Now, when you first switch it on in this mode, it will start to cycle through various different color options over a period of time. So it won't stay red and blue. You'll have to actually pick a color for it to stay there. Uh, so really the settings on this aren't the best. It would be much better if it retained the setting that you saved when you last used it because otherwise every time you switch it on you're either going to be cycling through colours or you have to pick a particular colour which I'll do now. I'll put a, a green on the top of there and then it should stay like that until we switch it off again. A couple of things I feel I should mention. The power lead is ridiculously short, but of course you can always extend that quite easily. Another one is that you get this jitter, as you can see here at the bottom of the bars, even when there's no sound whatsoever in the room. It's picking something up, perhaps through the electricity. I thought there might be a variable resistor I could turn down on the circuit board, but there isn't, no. And of course, we did mention earlier on, we've got the build quality issues, but I don't want these things to detract too much away from the fact that I've now got this massive LED music visualizer, and that's a lot of fun. However, one thing that might temper this down a little bit is the price. Let me play the part of the average viewer watching this video as I announce the price. Okay, here it is. Yeah, it doesn't take a genius to predict that the number one comment on this video is going to be about the price of the device. And again, those prices, £326 delivered to the UK or $473 delivered to the US. So yes, it is too expensive. So my answer to people that say that would be, yes, it is. Nothing I can do about that. Sorry, don't make them wish it was half price, quarter price. The next thing is, you don't have to buy one. This isn't a glib reply. I'm just saying it's not essential. It's not like your gas, electric, your know, utility bills, annual season ticket. It's a purely a silly thing that nobody actually really needs. So if you can't afford it, please don't buy one. And then the final one is, I often find that I buy things late at night after having a couple of glasses of whiskey, and then things seem to make a lot more sense. So I'd warn you, 
if you want it that might be a good way to buy it but if you don't want it then don't do that because again that might be a good way to buy it another way is to make your own like people suggested earlier on and if you go on youtube there's a lot of people doing some very clever things with led vu meters and visualizers and you might want to go down that route but if that all sounds too much like hard work and you want to buy what I think is probably the largest ready-made LED music visualizer on the market today, then there's links up in the video description where you can get hold of one of these for yourself. But that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.